Hey everyone, thank you for watching. In today's video, I'm really excited to do what's going to be a new first impressions follow-up video. So I do a lot of first impressions on my channel, trying new makeup, but I always like to come back to give my full thoughts on everything, how they've been working for me, if I would recommend them. I have a lot of Revlon in here, and I also have some ColourPop, uh, some Pure. We just have a lot of products to go through today, so let me go ahead and get started. Okay, so there's going to be two different videos that I'm going to be following up from today, so I will have them both linked down below. The first one, I was trying out a bunch of new drugstore products, including a bunch of products from the Revlon Candid line. So one of the first things I tried was their Candid Foundation. This is the Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. This is about $10.99 on the Ulta Beauty website. Revlon did send me over a bunch of their Candid products and they sent me, I think, three different shades of foundation. They were all pretty light. At the time I was trying them, 150 worked out pretty well for me, but it was like a week later or maybe even just a couple days later, I actually went on my vacation to Punta Cana and I came back with a nice tan a sunburn at first, but then also a tan. And honestly, my tan's been kind of like sticking around. So it was a little bit hard for me to test out this foundation once I came back because the shade match just was not great. I do have it on my skin today and I kind of tried my best to make it work and blend it and use a couple different bronzers and so on to try to get the shade match looking decent. Uh, but overall, I actually really, really like this foundation. I am pretty darn impressed with it. It does have a nice pump on it, which I do appreciate. It's supposed to be a medium buildable coverage foundation and I would agree with that. I think when I um, do about two and a half, three pumps and blend it out with a sponge, I get a really solid medium coverage and then you can kind of build it up from there to cover any areas that you want to. And I also think it gives a really nice natural finish to the skin. It has a bunch of claims on it about being super moisturizing, like it's supposed to go on like a moisturizer and it's supposed to keep you really moisturized all day. I do have dry skin, so I was really curious about that claim. And honestly, from the times that I've tried it, I can't say I really see that or feel that on my skin. It kind of feels like a typical lightweight foundation. I do still enjoy that it is very lightweight. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing too much foundation. Um, it doesn't get too cakey on me, which I appreciate, but I don't notice anything like super moisturizing about it. So I wanted to throw that out there because it says that in a couple different areas, like in the claims about this foundation. But like I said, I do think that it's nice and lightweight. It hasn't kicked up on me at all. And I feel like it has a pretty decent wear time. All the times that I've tried it out, I haven't had any issues like by the time I take my makeup off of me thinking like wow this foundation looks really bad on me or this foundation really broke up on me I think it has a, a pretty nice wear time I have preferred blending it out with a sponge that's kind of my normal preference when it comes to um, uh, foundations but this one I was a little curious about since they were saying it goes on like a moisturizer I was like is it going to be super liquidy because sometimes super liquidy I do prefer a brush uh, but I, I don't think so I don't think it's like you know super liquidy like that or feels more like skincare or anything so I still prefer it with a sponge and overall I have been really liking it I'm honestly kind of thinking about grabbing it in more of like my summer shade you know my warmer weather shades that's how much I like it and it's only $11 which I think is pretty darn good I would recommend and the the Revlon photo ready candid foundation if those are some of the claims some of the things that you look for in your foundation I was pretty impressed by it one item that I'm not very impressed with I do have that foundation on if I didn't say it I have I've tried to have the majority of these products on my face so you can see them and I do have this one on and I don't know if you would be able to tell that my under eyes are looking pretty rough this is the Revlon photo ready candid antioxidant concealer I believe this is $9.99 and the shade that I was trying was 015. Not a great great shade match for me. It's more on the yellow side, um, which is not the best for, for me personally. Um, but I was trying it out, trying to see what I think of it. I could kind of tell in my first impression video that this probably wasn't going to be a favorite of mine. I didn't feel like it blended out great on the under eyes and it just kind of clung to all of my dry patches under there. Like I can get pretty dry under eyes every once in a while. And when I do, they are like really dry and some concealers just really cling to that and this one definitely does and I don't know when I was blending it out today especially when I got like right here on my under eyes it was like it was like the concealer wouldn't even stick to my skin it was just kind of as I was blending it out it was like it was just disappearing and it looked super super odd so every time I've tried this concealer I've kind of dreaded doing it because I'm like I don't think I like this I don't think I like this and every time that I've used it I'm like mm, no this just doesn't look good it just it just breaks up too easily on the skin it doesn't blend out well um, and I also do think that it's pretty light in coverage and that could be because it just kind of 
blends into nothing. I feel like I have no coverage there. Uh, but for me, when it comes to concealers, I do prefer more of a full coverage or a medium leaning full coverage concealer because I typically have a lot going on in the morning. I need a lot of help with my concealer and this one just wasn't doing it for me. So I am not a fan of this one from Revlon. Uh, another product, I did touch on this one in my most recent Makeup Monthly, so I will have that one linked down below. I think there's a couple items in this video that were touched on in there, so I will definitely have that one linked for, you know, kind of more thorough reviews. But this is, again, the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Anti-Pollution Setting Powder. I have been super impressed with this. So I mentioned this in my Makeup Monthly in the favorite section, and I just said that I was kind of surprised because when it comes to loose setting powders, which I'm definitely back into, um, I used to love them. I kind of stopped using them for a while. Now I'm back on them. I have found myself gravitating more towards the high-end powders. I just feel like they work better. I feel like they just look you know, better on the skin. They're more lightweight for me. They don't cake up. And it seems like the drugstore ones I've been trying just aren't just aren't good enough so i've been leaning towards the high end but this one honestly to me feels like a high-end powder it is very very finely milled it's super light on the under eyes um, i've never had issues with it caking up on me this one you just have this little like pop tap here which kind of reminds me of like the milk makeup blur powder and then you have the powder inside um this is 9.99 but again i've been very impressed with this i do have it on today i feel like it kind of helped the concealer situation a little bit like it it kind of helped um co cover up what that concealer was not really helping with so i really appreciate this powder i've been reaching for it a lot if you like loose setting powders but maybe you don't reach for them a ton you don't need a bunch in your collection you don't need to pay a high-end price for one but you want one for maybe like special occasions you really want to lock your makeup into place and so on i definitely would recommend this one from revlon another product that this one just did not work for me from revlon this is their photo ready instant cheek maker Oh, okay, this is, I believe this one is $11.99 and it looks like so. So you're supposed to have like a cream blush on one end of the stick and then your cream highlight on the other. And if you watch like Revlon's videos about this or Instagram, it's just you're supposed to be like whoop and you're supposed to have a blush and a highlight and it's supposed to be quick and easy and on the go and all these different things. No, I tried. I tried in that video. I tried to make this work. I pulled out the shade Sweet Coral to try and I just, I don't like this. I think it could work fine if you take a brush or a sponge and, you know, get it into the cream blush first and tap it out and then maybe your finger or again a sponge or a brush and do the highlight. But uh, as this, it's a no. That's how Revlon was saying. That's how you use it. It's a one swipe product. One swipe and you go. I don't believe that. Um, so again, even if you could take your sponges or your brushes or your fingers or whatever and do it that way, I just don't really see the point of that. And I would rather use just some of my like regular products in my collection. I'm also not a huge cream makeup girl at this moment. I've been kind of getting back uh, into especially like cream bronzers. I've been using them more and more. But cream, cream blushes and cream uh, highlights, I just don't use a ton. So this product, I just, I think it was more gimmicky than anything. And yeah, I just don't, I just don't see it really working out. So I don't really recommend it. I don't think it's a one swipe on the go kind of product, but that's just me. Okay, I think this is the last product from Revlon that I was trying out. This is a lip product. This is the Revlon Ultra HD Matte Lip Mousse. It is the lip color that I have on today and this one is the shade mm, mm, death valley <laughs> Woo, okay this is the shade death valley these are 9.99 um these i just think are okay i do like the applicator on it it has like a very um it's not like a super sharp point but it's a little bit more defined so you can kind of line your lips with this too and then fill them in the formula is interesting to me because it actually feels like very dry and crumbly as i'm applying it and sometimes even as i'm like sliding it on my lips you can see the product like building up and like little balls on my lips that i have to go over to smooth them out so when i was doing that it was like it almost felt like this lipstick was old or something like it was old and expired which was kind of odd but on the lips it doesn't really feel very dry and even though it says it's a hyper matte 
formula it's supposed to be like nourishing on the lips and not too drying and it does feel that way it's kind of bizarre when i do first apply it i can actually rub my lips together for quite some time it's not super super matte once you apply it it does dry to this more matte looking formula on the lips uh, i don't think it's super long wearing though i remember the first time i wore this it was just a couple of hours after i applied it i ate like a sandwich i'm gonna say a sandwich because i had lunch which a turkey and cheese sandwich every day uh so i ate a sandwich and it was like way way had come off my lips not even just like a little bit in the center but like it had really start started to come off my lips so it's not super long wearing but you could re like i reapplied it and i thought it looked okay it didn't get too gunky or goopy like some liquid lipsticks can um so this kind of just falls into the okay category for me it has some pros it has some cons um i don't think it's like the worst lipstick that i've ever tried and i like that it's a little bit more comfortable on the lips but i do also wish it had a bit better of wear time and i don't know something about the formula how it goes on so just like crumbly is kind of odd to me so i don't know this one was just like an okay one also in that video i tried out a brush set from real techniques and i've been so impressed with this brush set so it's 20 dollars. you get four different brushes and then you also get the real technique sponge like the orange sponge which i think is awesome and i definitely recommend it i think this is a great price for all of the different brushes that you get and these are so so good so this is a foundation brush and i actually really really like this brush it's similar to the one from the moda metallics line that i love so much and i've mentioned in favorites it has a really similar shape to it it. I think the Moda one is just a little bit more on the dense side like they're both pretty dense like thick brushes the Moda one I like just slightly slightly more um, this one is just a little bit more loose to where I feel like I feel like I just have to work a little bit more with this one, whereas the Moda one is just so fast. But this one is super, super close to that one. And again, you're getting it in the set, which I think is awesome. Uh, this is a this is what I use as a bronzer brush. I think it's considered a blush brush. Yeah, it says blush brush on here. I pay no attention to that. I just do what I want to do with my brushes. Um, but I can use this for contour. I can use it for bronzer. Again, you could use it for blush. Um, and that's what I use today for both my contour slash bronzer and my bronzer like i said i kind of doubled up on the bronzers uh because the foundation was a little bit lighter but this is a really nice brush also this one i've been using for concealer this is the deluxe crease brush i use it to blend out my concealer on my under eyes and it's such a nice brush for that i've been so impressed with this one and i love this brush as a setting brush uh this yeah, yeah setting brush <laughs> Thank you so much. Because uh, you can also definitely use this as a highlight. Like, this would be a nice highlight brush too. But this is what I use to set powder on my under eyes. Loose powder, pressed powder, any of it. I think it's so good. It just gets right up in there. And it's also bigger so it doesn't take too much time. I think this is awesome. I've been really, really impressed with this entire brush set. Um, I would definitely recommend it. And to get a sponge, all for 20 bucks. I think that's pretty sweet. So I also was trying out the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. This is another one I put in my most recent makeup monthly in my favorite section. I love this mascara. A lot of people have been raving about it on YouTube and I'm right there with them. It has me really excited because I mean for for like years and years CoverGirl was not my go-to for mascaras. It was usually Maybelline. That was the mascaras that I was loving but I really like the wand on this one. It gives the lashes a lot of volume. It gives them some length. I have another mascara that I'm reviewing that's actually what on my, what's on my eyes today and I was like I was deciding between the two and I was like, really, I want to do the CoverGirl one, but honestly, I've worn it so much and I've already reviewed it and everything. Like, this is just a really nice mascara. I love that I don't get flaking or smudging with it. I can wear it on my lower lashes. It's not going to move. It's not going to go on my face. Super impressed with this one from CoverGirl, which has me pretty pumped. Alrighty, moving on to the second video, so I'll also have that one linked. This is where I was trying out some of the ColourPop and Kathleen Light's Zodiac pigments, some items from Pure and also Essence. So first up, I did purchase three of these from the ColourPop and Kathleen Light's Zodiac collection. These are the loose pigments that they came out with. So I purchased the Ram, also the Scales, and the Archer. The Archer is what I have on my eyes today, mixed with a little bit of the Marc Jacobs Stiletto palette, which if you caught my latest ranking new eyeshadow palettes. I, I really quite enjoyed that palette. So I was just curious about these. I am not a big loose pigment girl. I don't have a lot in my collection, but I really enjoy ColourPop. I really enjoy Kathleen Lights. I really enjoyed the Zodiac. It looked cool. Some of the live swatches was just like really getting me going. So I decided to go ahead and purchase them. Uh, I tried out all three of these in that video. So if you want to see them all on my eyes, I do have them all demoed there. And 
Like I said, I do have the Archer on today. Honestly, the Archer is the one that I like the least. These are only $6, which I think is a really great price, and you get a ton, like, I'm never gonna go through these, ever, let's be honest. I've never gone through a loose pigment, ever, um, even when I didn't have as big of a makeup collection. But the Archer is the only one that I don't love. So again, it's what's on my eyes. It's this very, like, deep purple, and it has some blue to it. I think it's mostly the color that I'm not gravitating towards, just because it's so dark. I do love wearing purple on my eyes, but something about this one, the time I put it on my eyes, which has been three times now, three or four times, I've just been kind of like, eh, I don't know, not the most confident with this one. And I also, like, it does have this cool blue shift to it, but I don't think it's, like, super, super unique, where I really, really like these two, which I'll get to, but this one, I'm like, you know, I have purple eyeshadows in my collection that I think that are pretty fun. I just, I think it's mostly just the color on this one. I, I don't love it so much on my eyes and I feel like I maybe have some other ones. So I can honestly see myself probably decluttering this in the future um, just because I, I feel like I'm not reaching for it as much. And especially when it comes to these two, I really, really like them. Honestly, my favorite, like the one that I wear the most, the one that I've been reaching for the most is the scales. I mean, this is a light pink one. It's super beautiful um, and it's just, kind of me and it's one of those kind of like go-to shades even though it is a loose pigment and one reason I was a little bit worried for the loose pigments was I was like you know are they going to be super easy to apply are they going to be so messy am I going to get a ton of fallout that really doesn't happen and especially with this one I don't know if it's just because of the lighter color but it's just easy to use and it's beautiful sometimes I just wear this all over the lid like I've had that moment where it's like oh hey we're going out with friends I'm like okay I gotta be ready in five minutes I literally spray a brush dip it in here put it on my eyelids add mascara and I'm like done and that is like shocking to me it's like seriously like shocking to me I would not think that I would get that from a loose pigment. But basically, I've been a lot happier with this one than I thought I was gonna be with any loose pigment. Um, and again, I just think the color is so beautiful. So I've been really, really happy with the scales. I also really do like the Ram. I did purchase the Ram because I am an Aries, so I had to do it. I purchased the other two more based on color because I do wear a lot of pinks and purples. But this one, I mostly bought because of my Zodiac sign. But also, it's a really freaking cool color. And honestly, I think this one's really awesome too. Too. I did wear it on a night out with friends and I got so many compliments. It was like that, you know, you're sitting at a table and the waitress comes over and she's like, by the way, what's on your eyes? I'm like, the Ram. Like, it's just one of those where if you want to like stand out and have people notice you, wear a fire orange eyeshadow with a bunch of gold packed in there and you're probably going to get some compliments on your look. So even though this isn't the most wearable shade to me, I still think that it's really easy to apply. I really like the color with green eyes. I've been kind of wearing more oranges lately, which is a little bit different for me, but I think it really makes green eyes pop. This is a really cool shade and it's definitely an Aries. So um, overall, I've been really happy with these from ColourPop. The Archer is the only one that I'm like, mm, so, so on. So the mascara that I tried in that video and the one that I'm wearing today is from Essence. This is the Volume Stylist Curl and Hold Mascara. This is only five dollars which is an awesome price essence did send me over a bunch of mascaras to try out this one intrigued me with the packaging it has kind of like this braided handle here and it's just like a pretty light pink ah, i thought it was fun um so again it's the mascara that i have on today and I think that it's a decent mascara. I think that it does it's pretty good for length, a little bit for volume, but it also has a nice, it gives a nice curl to the lashes. But the thing with Essence mascaras that I don't love is that they flake so badly on me. Every Essence mascara that I've tried, which to be honest, I think is only like three, like three or four maybe. Um, so it's like not that deep, but they all flake on me really, really bad. I'm probably gonna keep this one around because the most recent Essence mascara that I tried, which was like the false lash effect or something like that, it was white with orange. I didn't like it at first and it flaked really bad and then I left it alone for like a month and then I went back to it and it was almost like the formula had changed and it didn't flake as much on me, which I appreciate it, so then I used it all the way up. I'm gonna see if that happens with this one. It has been a couple weeks since it's been open, but I'm gonna like let it sit for a couple weeks again and go back to it and see if the same thing happens because maybe that's just an essence thing but i don't know if people either love the essence mascaras or they're like me and they're like they're okay but i can you know especially on my bottom lashes i can't wear them because it gets everywhere and i have black flakes all over me so 
that's kind of where this one felt. It's only five bucks, which is great, but you know, the CoverGirl is not that much more expensive and that one doesn't move on me. Also in that video, I tried out two products from Pure and both of these have really impressed me. So this one is the Bronzing Act. It is the Matte Bronzer in Light. This is $26. It is, it's, it's it's technically what I used as like kind of more contour today. Like I really focused it like in my cheekbones. And then I have also the Wet n Wild Sunset Striptease bronzer on. But this one, I, it's more of a lighter bronzer. I mean, it says that it's a light bronzer. This was sent to me from Pure. Um, so it's a little bit lighter for me. And it's also just a little bit more on the cool tone side. So I can get away with it as more of a contour. As a bronzer by itself, it's a really nice, more natural bronzer. But it, some days it doesn't give me that oomph, that bronze goddess look that I'm really going for. So I tend to to pair it with another bronzer, but especially as a contour shade, I do think that it's really pretty. Um, and again, it's very natural on the skin, which is something that I do really appreciate. It also smells really good. I'm not gonna lie, it does smell good. I think this is a pretty pricey bronzer though. It's $26 and you know, I just posted recently my wish list for the Sephora sale and I was talking about the Fenty bronzer, which is 30 and I was like, uh, uh, you know, going back and forth. Cause that can be pretty pricey. My Jouer bronzer duo where you get two bronzer shades, that's $30. Um, and this one is 26 for the one. So it would just, you know, obviously depend on your preferences and what you need in your collection. But honestly, I've been really liking this. I find myself that I keep reaching for it and I keep reaching for it even after I kind of already had my mind made up on what I thought about it. So I, it's just one of those things where I can't wear it all year round as a bronzer, but it can have a dual purpose for me since it is, again, a little bit more on that uh, cool tone side. So I actually really do quite enjoy this one from Pure and I do like the compact and you do get a mirror, which I think is nice. And then the other product that I was trying out is the highlight that I have on today. So this is the Pure Afterglow Highlighter. And again, this is $26, really similar packaging um, to the bronzer. I believe these were both kind of like a re-promote from Pure when they sent over their package. I don't think that these are new, new products from them, but they're just kind of re-promoting them. This highlight is stunning. When I tried it on first, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is beautiful. And I still think it's beautiful. I keep reaching for it so much. If you like a really nice, beautiful blinding highlight, I would definitely recommend this one. Again, $26. It is a little bit pricey. You know, it's not as much as like my Natasha Denona Super Glow Highlight, which is $38. That's pretty pricey, okay? Um, but you know, it's still up there, but I think that it's beautiful. I don't think that it shows a lot of texture also. And it's a really, really soft formula. Um, but a, a little bit goes a very long way. I don't really have to build this one up at all because you just get that intensity right away. But I think this is a beautiful highlight. So once again, really enjoyed this one, really reaching for it a lot. So I was pretty impressed with the, with both of these products from Pure. The last item that I wanna talk about is another one that I touched on in my most recent Makeup Monthly. This is another one from ColourPop. This is their Lippy Scrub. So they did send this over to me and this is by The Bushel. I believe these are $8. I love the smell of this so much. Um, I like the smell. I, I also like the way that it tastes, but it's just a really solid lip scrub. I mentioned it in the fine section because it's not necessarily a favorite, like I can't live without this type of scrub, but I use it quite a bit. I have it sitting next to my laptop just whenever I feel like my lips need to be exfoliated. I'm reaching for this one. It doesn't really have a shade to it or anything like that, um, but it does have you know the, the granules in there that are really exfoliating the lips. I usually use it in the morning when I feel like I need it and then just kind of let it naturally fade away because you'll get, you know, it looks like you have like a sugar scrub on your lips kind of thing. Um, so again, I like this one. I don't think it's like an absolute must have unless you're a huge um, lip scrub fan or a lip exfoliant fan. I would, I would recommend these for sure. You definitely do get a lot of product for a good price. So yeah, I've been quite enjoying this one also from ColourPop. But after that, that's going to wrap it up for today's first impression a follow up video. I'll have the first impression videos linked as well as all of the links to the products that I was talking about in case you're interested in any of these. I would love to know what you thought though about my reviews. Have you tried any of these products? Please do let us know. And as always, if you guys did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you'll also consider subscribing before you go and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video.